everyone. Thank you so much for joining live and hello everyone who is joining not live. Um, Asia, do you want to say hi also? Yeah, I, I just I feel so moved already by the number of people we have joining and um, that they've taken time in their day to come and discover about pleasure and hear this conversation, which I'm honestly, my body is like tingling all over to start. Uh, me too. Um, I haven't done this um, webinar thing in a minute, so please forgive me if I'm a little bit clunky. Um, but today's session um, falls on the summer solstice, so happy summer solstice to everyone. Um, hope your summer is coming in well, and happy and bright, um, and if not, that's okay. Um, but yeah, I just hope everyone is having a good restful time today. Uh, and today's webinar is titled Pleasure is Necessity, which is obviously a nod to Adrian Marie Brown and Audrey Lord. So also calling in these people um, who have informed a lot of our work. Um, and for um, those of you who are joining to find out more about the course, we'll be getting into that and which is called Join the Body, by the way. Um, and the tickets can be purchased at jointhebody.com. Uh, and we have a special code webinar 25 that's case sensitive. Um, and I'll share it in the chat later, but um, to get 25% off. Um, and also if you're facing any financial difficulties, bursaries are open and will be open until the uh, two weeks before the course starts. So please apply if you require financial assistance. Um, and we will probably not be getting to Q&A today unless we have extra time, but we will be doing a second webinar. So your questions will feed into that. So if you have questions, just feel free to pop them in the chat or into the Q&A thing, and I'll keep track of that and we'll shape the next webinar according to the questions. Um, and yeah, so, and this is recorded in case you are worried. Um, a few days after uh, this, I will be going through it and subtitling it. Um, so hopefully um, many more people can watch it after. So, okay, that was a little bit of a long intro. Um, <laughs> but I think I got through everything I needed to get through. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> Like, honestly that's so important I would have never thought to share those things at the beginning but you just opened up so much choice and possibility for everyone who's here and it's so empowering when we know hey I'm, I'm not the it's okay for me to want this for myself and other people will support me in getting it so yes. big yes exactly uh, I feel much better now that I got all of it off my chest um virtual it hugs to everyone. <laughs> um, okay, lots of joy. Um, I'm going to now introduce um Aisha. Um brief introduction because we're gonna get all into it. Mm -hmm. But um so I will pull up the bio. Um your course curator and host, um Aisha Paris Smith, is a somatic sexologist, body worker, and life coach and experiencing every day the wisdom of her body and having seen clients transform through the power of somatic methods. She works with the principle that when we can be with and integrate all parts of ourselves, we will have a greater sense of who we are and how to spans people of all ages, descriptions, and identities. Um, and I'm really excited to get into a lot more things. So I'm gonna cut some stuff out of the bio because we will get into that during the questions. Um, but so yes, so Aisha is the curator and host of our upcoming course, Join the Body, which is a six week online course, which is all about returning to the joy of the body, pleasure and the richness of life. So mm -hmm. before I get into the questions, um, Aisha, do you have anything to add or say? <laughs> um, what I Not wanna... to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I want to say that this is a really sort of strange course in a way. Um, I'm very strange as a person in, and um, it's not a course like other courses that you've probably done with Advaya. 
It's um, not about the intellect and the head, although we will be going into those sort of thought mental masturbation places today. Um, it's really about being, it's about experiencing, it's about connecting and finding presence and seeing what presence opens up for you. And I can't actually, as much as I would love to tell you all the things you're going to get out of the course, those things will arise spontaneously between you and your body. So it's a very, very special space too, as well as being totally weird and bonkers. Um, and I hope that, you know, what you're ready to discover is that wisdom that your body has. It's not my wisdom. You're not coming to learn about me. Um, I'll just be facilitating those experiences between you and your body and between each of us and the community group that we're in together. Um, so that's just what I want to share before. And also, you know, I'm a somatic sexologist. This course isn't about sex. You're not coming to be asked to confront your relationship with sex or to look at your sex life. It's about the fundamentals beneath the expression of sex. So how do we feel in our body? And are we able to communicate what we're feeling? Do we know what we want and how to ask for or facilitate that? Do we understand what stops us from connecting with others, from connecting with our body or exploring our desires? So it's like, it's, it's yes, for sure. If you are looking at for, to experience changes at the level of your sex life, for instance, you can get that out of this course, but it's, we're going deeper. We're going more to the roots, more to the core of your relationship with your body and pleasure. Yay. Um, <laughs> I love that. Um, also a useful clarification because I think people might feel um, intimidated as well. Um, and of course, not to say that any of those things that we will not be covering isn't important, um, mm -hmm. but that like getting to the root of things is hopefully the first step. And then hopefully in the future, um, if and when we have future courses with Aisha, we will get into the more fun parts. <laughs> Uh, but for now, I think this remains a very like accessible course to um, any and all with bodies. So um, yeah. we will start with um, the first question. I do have a list. So <laughs> um, <laughs> bring it on. The Tati. first question is all about you. Um, and so you describe your work as about more than pleasure. Um, it's also about finding safety, freeing self-expression, and integrating shadow. Mm. Um, and so what we're getting at here is kind of a nuanced understanding of pleasure. It's not just about like feeling good, even though, like we said, feeling good is really important. Um, but kind of pleasure and joy as firstly like radical acts, but also um, about more than just feeling nice and happy um, and so that being said I wanted to ask about what you mean by pleasure um, how like what's informed your view and definition of pleasure um, mm -hmm. and also acknowledging that that changes day to day year to year <laughs> decade to decade so <laughs> I have to say like even moment to moment who I am I'm changing all the time my take on things changes all the time and um, I like to fill into questions. So just give me a minute to fill into it. Pleasure is that space that opens up when I take a moment to breathe. When I feel the body that I'm in. And if, you know, everyone who's on the webinar or watching this, you can do that right now. You can just feel into your body and notice what sensations are moving. Notice how you're breathing. Notice where your eyes want to go in the room. Like I am I was watching the screen that was bringing me pleasure. Now that I'm spotlit, I'm feeling like more like, oh, I want to look around. Um, these experiences that the be that being in a body offers up can can facilitate pleasure. 
And pleasure in its most basic form is just that enjoyable sensations in the body. However, when we move into experiences of enjoyable sensations, we open up all these different opportunities, like opportunities to bond with other people. So having pleasurable experiences with another bonds us to them. It de-stresses and removes anxiety. So it's this incredible resource for getting through tough times. If we can open up these pockets of pleasure in our day, you know, they don't have to last very long. Um, When I speak about pleasure, I'm not talking about hedonistic pleasure that ends with hangovers or tummy aches from eating too much chocolate. I'm talking about long-term pleasure that, that nourishes the body. And I don't think that we have many good, healthy role models for what that looks like. And I think that most people don't relate to their body as this vessel for pleasure. In fact, a lot of people are racked with pain um, or like high stress or difficult emotions that they can't find a lot of expression, safe, safe spaces for expression of. And so for me, working with pleasure, also having, you know, I grew up in a, in a I grew up in a household that had a lot of abuse going on. And then as I grew up and left that home, I developed an eating disorder. And so there was a really difficult experience that I was having with the outside world and all the pain and difficulty I was experiencing there. And then when I had my eating disorder, that sort of projection or experience that I was having outside turned inward. And then suddenly I was really struggling with my body, really struggling to like even receive sensory pleasures like the taste of food or the sound of other people's voices. And I really struggled. And it was through like not trying to fix myself, but just moving into experiences of pleasure that I suddenly found an access to a new way of being. It was like, oh, I don't have to go and fix all my problems. I can just align with what feels good and see how everything else starts organizing organizing itself around that. And I'm very aware of how much we don't know. There's, you know, sort of everything that we look at and we say we know these days are just the latest scientific explanation for them or the latest spiritual explanation for them. All I can share is what works, and this works. Um, We've mentioned Audre Lorde and Adrienne Marie Brown. You know, they're two women of color who face systemic oppression, families full of trauma and abuse, and, um, you know, outside of themselves, no one was really saying, hey, like, let's have you live a good life. It was a radical act for them to say, I want to have a better experience. I'm going to start exploring what that feels like between me and my body, between me and myself. We talk about, you know, we should love ourselves. We should love ourselves first. But it's sort of this top down approach of like, I should love myself. Yes. Rather than, well, let's experience what there is here. And for me, that's everything. You know, if I can just it's like if I can just spend some time with my hand like oh I'm gonna like explore and enjoy my hand oh my hand the skin on my hand feels so good it's just like that and there's a total emptiness there that is also like an active you know if I go back to sort of more spiritual language it's like a movement meditation a sensory meditation um So that is my experience of pleasure. And for me, you know, living in the city of London, being self-employed, having recovered from an eating disorder and um, living like modern life as it is today, pleasure plays a huge role for me every single day. There's not one day that goes by. I don't think there's even an hour that goes by when I'm not focused on and experiencing pleasure to resource myself. Um, So I think that's all I want to share about that right now. That's what that feels complete for me. Thank you for sharing that. Um, 
I'm gonna add spotlight so <laughs> you're not just alone. Um, but um, yeah, there's a lot to to hold there, um, and I also don't want to like unpick all of that at the moment um, mm -hmm. but I think what stuck out to me is definitely like this kind of sense of um, to access pleasure um, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to fix everything that's wrong or um, address everything that's wrong even though that's definitely like part of it Mm -hmm. um, but that there is kind of our knowing that there is that pathway, there's that option, there is that route that you can take um, towards pleasure in spite of and despite of everything that you are going through or have been going through. Um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm holding on to that thought um, first and foremost. Pammy, um, can I add something? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, because I remember when you first asked this question, this popped up and I'm like, oh, I got to say that. That's so important. So part of my upbringing was also that everyone around me was just trying to survive, you know, really like my mom was just trying to stay alive. And I was like, so I learned how to survive and surviving's great, you know, like I'm still here. That's so awesome. But being able to thrive and setting my goal on thriving versus surviving, which, you know, there was no thought about thriving before. And I think for a lot of people, they are thinking actually, like, even if they don't have that conscious, like, oh my goodness, I need to, um, you know, I want to wake up tomorrow morning. They might have it more like, oh, I want to pay my rent or, oh, I want to, you know, fall in love and have children. And, you know, they think of it that way, but they think of it like surviving. And for me, um, when I focus my attention on thriving instead of on surviving, it, it like my, the shape of my body changed, the shape of my world changed and pleasure was a huge and is still a huge part of that. So when I think about thriving, I'm feel, you know, it's, it's about moving from a place of safety. And it's about moving towards things that feel good versus moving away from things that feel bad or could be threatening to me. And so this is a lot what the course is about, is like, we're living in this world to survive it, but what if we switch to thriving in it? And what if we didn't need to change the outside world in order to do that? What if we didn't need to enroll anyone else into that? if it was just between me and myself. And the channel for that, one of the expressions of that is pleasure. Um, so yes, I think that is like such a core cool piece that sort of sits inside my heart and my tummy every day and which I haven't always had words to articulate, but that's how it is for me. And I think that's, that's what I would like to offer a lot of other people too through this course. Yes, um, lots of love in the chat. So love back to everyone out there. Um, and yeah, definitely like asking the question of like, are we thriving or are we surviving? Um, and knowing that the option to thrive is like there for us and that we can, um, take that it's not like you have to and it's not even that you have to survive or thrive um it's just that they you know they're they're there um you can choose to <laughs> yeah. do whatever you want um as a free agent <laughs> in this world um yeah and so um also I realized that while I was listening to the answer I was like somehow not breathing so if anyone who's listening out there isn't like just taking deep breaths please mm -hmm. do that um yeah. Yeah. And um, so this is, I just want to acknowledge that this is really big stuff. This is like existential stuff. And it like, you know, <laughs> we every day we wake up and we want to make the most of the day and we don't want to live the same day as yesterday and live a generalized life. And so it does stop us from breathing, you know, yeah. um, and also we might be in the space of I want to capture everything that they're sharing and I, I want to get it. And I, I just want to share that you won't get everything. Um, because of the way I speak about things. Um, 
and just like trust just trust just trust you did your bit you showed up you're here listening yeah. and yeah. the rest will just happen yeah and things will find you when they find you um algorithms or <laughs> um that's a uh, <laughs> um so anyway back to my list of questions um yeah so um my second question is about um people not accessing uh our incredible capacity for pleasure um you know I think you kind of touch on it a little bit but I do think that um might be worth like pointing out um and seeing directly um yeah. what are kind of obstacles for um accessing our capacity for pleasure um whether they be kind of I mean I think I think they're all it's like physical social political it's all connected so maybe speak a little bit to that okay mm. so I like to call the body a pleasure super highway um there's all this pleasure available all the time and you know I sort of spoke about this idea of you know like dragging the hand and and just feeling the pleasure in it but there's also pleasure outside of us there's pleasure through the sounds that we hear and when I wake up in the morning I can always hear the birds chirping um and so there is we literally the body is is structured to that every inch of it has a sensory tone and all we have to do is um, put our attention there and second um, stimulate a situation that brings like a positive sensory experience so for instance if I was listening to in the morning um, construction work outside that would not necessarily be like a super sexy, pleasurable thing that was happening. And one of the ways that I could move towards pleasure from that would be probably like to close my windows, to like put in my headphones and listen to something more soothing. Um, but we don't tend to think about what's happening for us on a sensory level. We don't tend to go like, if, if my head is feeling squashed together and hurting, I can, I might not recognize that that's happening. I may not be in tune with an awareness. I may not be like pulling on my interoception, which is my ability to be aware of this state inside of myself. And if I'm not aware, then this feeling that I've got with my head, like push together and all, all um, hurting and, and scrunched up is going to make me think I'm stressed. Today's a horrible day. I don't want to be here. All these things that I'm projecting from that one sensation that I'm having. But if I move my attention there, oh, my head is hurting. Okay. So do I need to drink more water? Um, uh, have I got a migraine coming on? Um, am I wearing uh, a too tight scrunchie? So my um, it's like pulling tension on my head. Like there are all these different different options that we can open to. And it's funny. There's this one study about happiness, and they say it's not the presence of good things that necessarily make us happy, but the absence of like annoying or upsetting or uncomfortable things and most of us are like running towards the good things like I'm gonna work harder um I'm gonna spend more time outside I'm going to spend more time with my friends find better friends find a partner blah 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 and we're like running oh I'm gonna take a holiday I'm gonna run towards these good things and we're not so much checking okay where is the the not so good stuff like where where is this ex I'm having this experience of being stressed or I'm having this experience of not quite feeling like satisfied where is that coming from and it's mostly because we don't know how to effectively look our ex they say that story our narrative of what's happening follows our state the state of our body the state of our nervous system, the state of our emotion, the state of our thoughts, the state of our um, impulses and our ability to, to like, to express our impulses. And when we know that, okay, story follows state, 
I don't like what's happening here. I don't feel good in this moment. What's happening in my state? And how do I get better at noticing what's moving in my state? Like that's so vital. And there was this other study that was done um, looking at how emotionally in tune people are, like how good people are at reading their own physiological and emotional states. And the more that people could notice like what's moving in their body on the level of sensation. So like, for instance, I have um, a tension right now in my tummy, but I know that that tension is like an excited tension, you know? And um, if I wasn't good at reading that, then I might just feel excited or I might just feel, oh, I've got so much energy right now and I don't know why or where that's coming from. But by knowing where uh, where it's coming from and, and where it is in my body, it doesn't just make me better at managing my own emotions and having great emotional hygiene. It also makes me better at reading everyone else's emotions so that even when I'm with someone who doesn't have as high um, an emotional, we call it intelligence, as I do or doesn't have an access to this interception, I can support them with it and I can better manage our relationship as a result. I can intuit or instinctively know what's moving for them. So it's really, really, really important that we're able to stay focused on our body, to notice. to, And then with that, with that, with that choice that comes in, oh, I have a choice because I know what's going on. Then I can put things in place to feel really good. So for instance, not all of you will care about this, but this is like a big theme in the last year of my life is like, I have been searching for clothes that fit me, clothes for my wardrobe, but I have a really high, um, I have really high requirements for my clothes. My clothes need to fit me. So my clothes need to fit me, whether I'm like having a bloated day or whether I'm having, I've, I've lost a bit of weight and I've got a bit skinnier or I've gained a bit of weight and I've got a bit fatter or like whatever is going on, my clothes need to fit me. My clothes need to feel really good against my skin. I don't have any scratchy pieces of clothing. I, I like to dress in like soft cotton or silk. Uh, sometimes I like really heavy pieces if I feel if I feel like I need to be a bit more grounded today like let's let's put something heavy on so there is there are ways that we can weave into our world these beautiful experiences you know when I when I sat down here I lit some incense it's a particular smell that grounds me so that I could be present on this call so that I could feel like with nerves going I could manage that you know and so there, there are all these delicious things we can do. We have so much choice to feel good through the body, but we have to be aware that that is available to us. And then we have to be aware of what works for us. And a lot of clients come to me because they don't know how they like to be touched, you know, and touch is such an important one. Um, so we need to go on this journey of self-discovery through the body in order to really know how to tap into all the pleasure that's available for us there. Wow. Breathing. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm seeing, I'm just seeing like the comments and making sure like, uh, I'm not catching any kind of questions or anything. Um, but yes, I think listening and noticing sensations has been, or like kind of signals from your body has been a big theme for me also. Um, hopefully it's been a big theme for a lot of people who are listening as well. Um, I think learning how to kind of slow down and pay attention is something that, first of all, we're not being like paid to do that. So like, people just aren't doing it um but it is so good for our bodies so good for our systems just regulating our systems um and so yeah trying to really bring that habit into our lives is I think something we'll be going into during the course as well um and speaking of touch um that's a good segue into the next question um which is so if you guys have read the um, course description, um, part of that has 
this uh, particular phrase or this sen these sentences that I really like, uh, which Asia has written. Um, it goes, touch allows us to bring a tactile experience of care and attention to places that may have never received it. Um, it's less about being taught something new and more about being prompted to find the permission to access and act upon an intelligence that was always there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to drop that in the chat also um, so people can kind of let that ruminate. Um, but so I think the idea here is that, um, or kind of the key question here is what happens when um, we touch, like what, what the tactile experience really brings to ourselves mm -hmm. um, and also kind of the idea which also again you've been speaking about already is none of this is new um, this is just kind of opening our eyes to what's always been there mm -hmm. so I wanted you to like elaborate a little bit more about that um, and yeah maybe also bring in some kind of more practical examples the clothes one was a really good practical example but like just in ways that are like I think we talk about touch in ways that are sometimes very abstracted, really. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Um, so I'll start by saying that to me, the body is our unconscious manifest. So when we're touching the body, we're actually touching unprocessed and held past experiences they say that the body holds on to the trauma that we haven't been able to deal with and so when we start touching ourselves we actually come into connection with those things and you know if we if for instance someone comes and holds uh if someone came and like held my shoulder right now depending on my previous experiences with my body I'm going to have a different experience of that for instance if my mother used to hold me like this when she would reassure me as a child it's gonna feel really sweet and I'm gonna like remember the sentiment of that and if I used to be grabbed here um, in the playground when a kid would bully me then I'm going to remember that and it's going to have a different context to it but the other thing that's incredible about touch which is on a very different level is that before we had words when we were in a pre-verbal state our body was still learning through all the experiences that we had and even like generally we start to build memory and start to learn words at the same time so that those two areas in our brain are forming and when we're learning things say like from zero from from month from day one until we're three years old there are all these moments that we're having that we're learning from but we aren't storing memory of them and we don't have words that we're learning through we're learning through touch we're learning through our senses. And so those things get encased and woven inside our psyche. Um, let me think of a like a practical down to earth, um, easy to get example of this. So if I smelt cedar wood through the first year of my life, and in a home that was unsafe to me as an adult when I smell cedar wood I'm gonna not like something I'm gonna not like the person that's smelling of it I'm not gonna like the space that I'm in and I'm not gonna have a reason why it's just gonna feel bad to me and to the same degree when we're experiencing touch in our body we're contacting places inside of us that are deeper for us than words and so it's a very powerful thing to offer ourselves touch to self-soothe through touch to reach out to another person and touch them um and for me touch is I'm just going to read the question again. Touch allows us to bring in tactile experience of care and attention. Yeah. 
So the thing about being given permission to access and act upon an intelligence is that when we touch, we come immediately into the body. So people talk about embodiment and how do I get embodied? And that's something that we cover in depth on the course. But if I'm going through my senses, I'm immediately in my body. And we spend a lot of time up here in the mind. And when we drop into the body and all the other things the body has to share that is true for us, independent from the outside world, it can be quite overwhelming for people. They get all this information about what they want, what they don't want, how they're feeling. And if we're not empowered and agent, like given choice to act from those things, or if we don't trust ourselves, it's really overwhelming to receive touch. It's really overwhelming even to like eat food. And touch drops us into our body. Touch connects us with all those parts. But it's also an incredible tool for soothing us inside of those experiences. So, for instance, if I have a, if I have a, um, a, a tummy ache, I can just come and I can just stroke my tummy. And even though the tummy ache itself may, might be overwhelming, by having this soft, sweet caress on top of the skin... I'm now suddenly balancing my experience and I'm resourced and I'm also doing an action that resonates through past memories that I can't even reach memories that I don't don't have them in my physical memory, but they live as memories through my psyche and my body of care. So there will be moments when my caregivers stroked me, my tummy, or loved me with, with strokes. And so it's just an incredibly effective way to get to very deep parts of ourselves. Yeah, um, I'm going to, I need to not forget to do that. But um, so, yes, I think... Um, just responding to that um yeah I think this is quite kind of information and wisdom that is kind of entering the mainstream now as well I think people understanding that like um our body holds um experiences good and bad um mm -hmm. but of course I think um bad more so than good or mm -hmm. more like inclined to hold on to to the bad experiences um, rather than the good ones so it's time to retrain our bodies everyone <laughs> um and yeah um i yeah. would love to yes yes sorry can i just add one last thing which is for me touch is an incredible tool for for regulating our systems when we aren't able to regulate ourselves to so say we get really angry about something or say we're really tired and we can't sleep we need to be able to regulate our system so then we can continue taking actions that feel good for us. If we're just over, if we're dysregulated, then we don't know how to communicate the thing we need to communicate, or we don't know how to lower this sense of anger or to use it in a powerful way. Anger is actually just in service of our care and protection. It's there's no, for me, there's nothing wrong with anger, but we do need to know how to regulate ourselves. And touch just does that because with touch, we're, we're touching the nervous system. You know, the nervous system comes all the way into our skin. So we're, we're acting upon it directly. Um, and I feel like, yeah, that's a really important point to mm. make as well. Yeah. But please, I you had another question. <laughs> no, um, I mean, I, I can go to that question anytime. Just want to like, um, emphasize that yes I think all kind of emotions and like all emotions are valid and um, like anger right is just on many levels I think a very useful um, emotion uh, to tap into I think it's it's less about the emotion itself and more about kind of what it tells us about ourselves about the situation that we are in um, and again, coming back to kind of observing and listening uh, so that we can figure out how to respond, regulate um, accordingly. Um, and yeah, again, tools that we'll be learning on the course. So, um, and <laughs> I think now would be a good time to introduce the course um, more directly. We will return to the questions 
um, later on. But I think just to kind of describe more specifically about the course, um, I'm sure a lot of people who are attending today and watching the webinar uh, recording will also be interested in finding out about the course and what we'll be covering. So a lot of information is on the website, but we will be, um, Aisha will be talking a little bit more about the sessions in more detail mm -hmm. um, and also giving us a little bit more about the context, which is hard to express in <laughs> copy on a website. So <laughs> take it away, Aisha. <laughs> Thank you, Tammy. Um, so the, this course, it's a six week course. And um, we also have a week in between. So you can go out and be like experimenting in the world to see how can I use these tools that I've gotten from the first three weeks? And what do I need to learn in the last three in order to really maximize on this? But like I've said, the course is not a usual course. This course accounts for and, and fosters your unique expression of joy your unique relationship with your body, which like I've shared is based on experiences that you've been through, like that you and your body have been through together and also your individual access to pleasure. So what makes us each feel safe, comfortable and joyful is very different. And the course has been created in respect of that. And this is a community course. So each week we'll meet as a community to look at those three things, your unique expression of joy, your unique relationship with your body and your individual access to pleasure. And we'll look at those things through the lens of your body and we'll acknowledge and share what we've uncovered individually. That helps our memory so that we can then resource out in our day-to-day -day lives what we learn through the course. In many ways, you'll be your own expander, depending on the level to which you take on each invitation and how much you value, how much value you put on your body's intuitive response. And I'll also be there for you as a resource and facilitator, sharing my experiences and reflecting along with you what comes up to open up new and deeper levels of awareness. So I'm like going to add to these discoveries that you make, um, usually through questions, not through, yes, I saw you got that, but what about this too? It's more like, and what if you looked at it this way, then what's there for you? Um, so this course, I've designed it in the same way that I work with my one-to-one -one clients who find themselves going through organic, radical change out of their sessions with me. It's a powerful thing to center our body's intelligence as the expert of what we need rather than another person. Um, so thank you in advance for not putting me on a pedestal. The first week we look at embodiment as a profound starting point. You'll learn through experiences, things like, well, what is the state of embodiment and how does my body communicate with me? It's a really trendy word that everyone's using at the moment, embodiment. And, um, but not everyone has a deep understanding of, or a lived experience of what embodiment is. And because we tend to be in environments that recognize only the mind and intellect as valuable parts of ourselves, the body is too often just judged superficially, which doesn't leave us with a great experience of it or with any level of appreciation for all the intelligence and opportunity it offers us. Um, so on the course each week, you'll hear your body speak, you'll get to understand what it's saying to you, and you'll be encouraged to follow its guidance as an experiment, if not anything else. Your body will lead you through this first session that we have together around embodiment and in every session thereafter. This course is unapologetically a body-led space. Week two focuses on what embodied joy is and how do we create it? You know, what is self-created, self-led joy? You'll get up close and personal with the things we've been talking about these last few weeks. And each week builds on that to get any pleasure box out of the way and orientates each of us to what it means to feel good genuinely in our body. Not just I should feel good or I should feel grateful, but wow this experience is so nice um and then we'll understand 
through a lived experience what embodied joy is. You'll be equipping yourself with referenceable tools that you can call upon anytime and anywhere to feel good. And this feel this course that's centered around feeling good, it's um it's unique in that we're looking at feeling good in the body without looking at sex. So how do we resource ourselves to better manage the everyday challenges of modern life? And through this course, <clears throat> whilst we don't look at sex, we will be in a space that's sex positive and like, you know, understands that being human means that we have genitals and we, we have sex and we have sex lives. And so anything that you learn about your intimacy or your sensuality is really welcome to be shared in the space. <clears throat> um, what else do I want to share? I guess my favorite thing about this course is that there's no expectation of you and how you participate. So one of the greatest things about, I think the coaching that I offer, but also this way that I live life is everything's a choice. And I don't think we recognize it enough that our life is just one choice after another. And when we make the same choices every day, we experience life and the world the same way. We experience our, our capacity and our potential and who we are the same way. When we choose to behave towards other people the same way based on who we think they are, we have the same experience of them. So I want to put you front and center as the creator of your experience of the course and empower you to choose again and again and again how you want to follow the invitations. What feels good to you? Do you want to do the course whilst you're walking in the park? Do you want to be laid down on your bed? Um, how do you want to be? Do you, you know, following your body in the moment instead of predetermining, I should be sat at a desk fully present with this course in order to get the most out of it. Actually, when we turn to the body, it tends to not be that simple. One day you might be really tired and want to lie down. Another day you might feel so filled with energy from what's being shared that you've got to stand up and move around and dance it out. So um, that's like one of the core principles that we've woven into the course structure. Um, and you're also, of course, welcome to say no, to say, no, Aisha, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to go into the breakout room. No, I'm, I'm not doing this exercise with everyone else. And to just be with your no and to be with everyone else celebrating you in your no, which in itself is a very unique experience that we don't get a lot of. Um, so the actual way each session breaks down, I want to share with you too. Every week we'll have a really short introduction by me. We'll then share group agreements because we are in community. So in order that we feel safe in this community, in order that we can get comfortable, that we can have pleasurable experiences, well, we first need to feel safe. So I've created some group agreements so that we can have that. Then we'll do an arriving practice. This is a body-based presencing exercise. It's very chill. It will allow you to discover as a immediate unfolding how you want to participate in that session today. What would serve you and your body? Um, then I'll do a teaching for um, on one aspect of the course. So whether that's, you know, working through shame, understanding how your body speaks and says yes or no, how you can increase your capacity for pleasure in everyday life, how you can um, find ownership again of the things that you want and not feel like you have to go to everyone else to get permission for it. We'll do, I'll, I'll be giving a talk. Then you get to answer question, ask questions about any of that to make sure that it landed for you and to clear up any, any place where I didn't make complete sense. And then we'll spend the rest of the course being in practice of those principles. So I'll be making invitations, a somatic invitation, a body-based activity that will enter into you together and you'll feel it out and you'll immediately get to apply what was taught in the first part. And you'll get to try it on for yourself and with your body and see how it feels for you. 
um, so that you can evaluate for yourself, is this something that I, that holds merit for me? Is this something that I want to be using in my day-to-day -day life? And then we'll go into breakout rooms. So for those of you who are live, you'll actually get to then be one-to-one -one with someone doing either another exercise or a reflection on what you discover today. And that is really an opportunity to acknowledge each other for, for like being on the court in your life this way. And also to have a real life interaction of like, for instance, saying no, or sharing what you're feeling in your body, um, or teaching them the tool that you just learned so that you can like empower the people in your life to this. There are many different breakout room activities I have, which I'm very excited about. And then we'll end um, when everyone comes back from that with some one-to-one -one coaching. So if there was something that blocked you or stopped you that you don't feel was um, taken care of by everything that we shared, you'll get some time to ask for that support. And that feels to me like a really important part of the fact that it's a group community that we're learning, that we're learning together because we in community, our learning is accelerated out of the fact that we have all these different people working on different things that resonate and apply to us in our lives. Our focus right now is on this other intention, but oh my goodness, yes, let me take that up too. So we also have that happening. Um, it's a very exciting course. There's so much more I could say, but I'm going to stop there and, and go back to you, Tammy. <laughs> Thank you for that. You really powered through that one. Um, <laughs> also, thank There's you, so much listening. to say. There's so yeah. much to say. There is. And you didn't even get through like all of it. Um, and actually, I'm not going to make you go through um, the rest of it because I think it, it, it like it's like exhausting to go through the whole thing. Um, so but and, and, and we can explore that offline. But um, uh, just to say that um yeah this is a really unique experience that we are offering um the chance to kind of do like embodiment work with other people in a safe space um mm -hmm. also like virtually which I think in this case has its strengths because sometimes you might feel uncomfortable like exploring your body with other people in person um so maybe like um, I mean, we at this point, we're kind of all over like Zoom and stuff. So thank you everyone for joining us live, by the way. Um, <laughs> you know, we're like past that moment kind of. Um, but but this might be kind of a really good experience. Like one of those things where it makes maybe, um, it, it does make sense to, to, to do it virtually for people who are, you know, shy or uncomfortable or, you know, haven't yeah. warmed up. To, yeah. And it actually, like, I hope... I have my fingers crossed because I know it's not a reality for everyone, but I really hope that everyone who's doing the course has like their home is a safe space and that will support them dropping into the work much quicker. Um, and because we have a week in between and we're meeting just for two hours coming together as a group, it would take longer for us to be able to do the depth of inquiry that we're going to be doing. Not that we're going to triggering areas, by the way, like I'm a trauma informed coach and I saw some questions in the chat about that. So I just want you to know that this is a trauma informed course. Um, it's really digestible, um, but that do that doesn't sort of underestimate how powerful it is because it's also very, very powerful to work with what feels good and moving away from what doesn't. <clears throat> But yeah, there is there is absolutely a deliciousness inside of the fact that we're doing body based work on Zoom. It's probably none of us. I think it's like the what we would prefer, but there are <laughs> benefits to it too. Totally, especially um, since we're an international community here. Yeah, I love that. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, like I don't know. So so um, just to like briefly touch on that. Um, it's uh it is very difficult for folks who are in kind of um or at least in because I'm familiar with the Asia time zone so um mm. for my friends out there in the same time zone um it is it is going to be really hard time zone wise so hopefully in the future we'll be able to figure out time zones so that we offer other options but at the moment it is going to be a little bit hard to join live mm. um that being said 
we do have, if I could allay, is that the word? Your fears. Um, our courses are fairly like internationally attended. So people do attend live at like really odd hours. Um, so you'll not be alone, I don't think. If you want to know specifically, please write into us um, and we'll check, double check for you um, if that's something you're worried about. But but yeah, so um, back to the last few questions. Um, I'm also wary of time, so I want to make sure that like we get through them. And also to people who have asked questions, um, they will be um, answered. Uh, so please feel free to keep asking them. Um, I'll just take them down for the next session. Um, so they will be answered and I am seeing them. So um, yeah, so I think related to, to some of the comments in the chat is um, talking about pleasure and joy as a necessity for all. Um, and so Aisha, you write that um, the body is not a fixed, slow moving object. It is constantly rebuilding itself and is malleable at any age. Um, so my question, and I think a, a question on a lot of people's minds is, is body-based work really for everyone, um, regardless of age, body type, health conditions? Um, and also, I think this might be um, a, a point where it would be good to explain how it is accessible uh, for all kinds of bodies um, and how that will be kind of taken care of, but also <laughs> generally like how bodies, how body-based work is accessible to all, or at least it should be. <laughs> yes. I mean, we all, we all have a body, body. We all have a body and we, it, we don't get born into this world with a manual that says, Hey, here's the body that you're given. Here's the manual for it. Go and enjoy it. And I always think of the body also as a talisman. And I feel like there are all these nooks and crannies and things where we are, that are underappreciated. And since we all have a body, yes, I believe this course is for everyone. Um, I wish that everyone could have the experience of exploring their relationship with their body and exploring their relationship with joy. And I think that we would live in a very different society if people even got like 5% of the exploration that I've had, um, we, we would absolutely live in a different world. The course is, you know, it's not gender specific. It's not just for um, it's not just for certain bodies. It really it's it it really is for everyone. I'm not sure that I can say more about it than that. It's it's for us all. Um, yeah, I think we all have something to learn, and even you know, even I I know that I will learn a lot on this course. I know that what people will share will open up things for me. So I'm excited about that. Mm. And I guess like a question is, um, or more specific question would be like, um, is body-based work like intensive? Is it, um, does it require a lot of like um, movement and mobility per se? Ah, um, I see. Yeah, so okay. Like that. <laughs> yeah. So this course does not require a lot of movement or mobility. This course doesn't require you to be a singer this course doesn't require you to have a space outside it is a, a fantastically versatile course um and all you need is yourself your body and a safe space to work from with good internet connection that's it everything else maybe a pen and paper to write down some things that your body says that you might want to remember um I always encourage that because the body just comes out with these incredible things but that's it that's all you need that's great I can do that <laughs> um I hope I hope people can do that too um but so moving right along to our last question um so um yeah I think the the last question is really focused on why is it kind of an important collective exercise to do body-based work together not just on this course but 
I mean, I think speaking more generally to um, doing kind of like, why is it important to create spaces in which people do embodiment work together? Um, and mm -hmm. what does that open up? Um, and of, of course, like this is not to say that like doing it individually or one to one is not important, but you know, yeah. it, it's like, what is it about a community that changes? Um, that opens up something, opens up new possibilities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think in many ways, it's still quite taboo to acknowledge that we each have bodies, you know, especially like post pandemic, everyone's renegotiating their boundaries. And if they want hugs or handshakes or, um, and living in the city, it's, you know, if, if I sit next to someone on the bus, should I sort of sit half off my seat so that I don't acknowledge that they have a body and that I have a body and touch them? There's, there's a lot of charge packed into um, the fact that we have bodies and learning how to maneuver ourselves smoothly and communicatively with our body is quite a big necessary skill and learning how to feel good inside that body when we're around other people is also a super necessary skill it's like when I'm in a meeting whether it's on zoom or in person do I know that it's fine if I get up and go to the bathroom or do I feel like everyone's going to judge me do I think it's like, it's okay to move around a bit and stretch because that's what I need? Yeah, absolutely. We don't always live inside of those agreements, but being in a space that is body positive like this will leave a mark and will mean that we are tougher negotiators and better advocates for our body wherever we are, whenever we are, whoever we're with. So that feels really important. And then the other thing is that sharing about our bodies in a community space, well, it dissolves shame so fast. Shame is one of like the nastiest things inside of the human experience, in my personal opinion. And when we get to speak things aloud and others hear them and hear that this is us and this is our experience and this is our body and when we hear other people do the same and we feel no judgment towards them in fact we feel compassion and resonance and we get that that's what they also offer us when we speak it's just hugely healing and I don't use the word healing very often but that is it's hugely it brings us back to the wholeness of ourselves um the other huge benefit that we get from being in a group space of bodies together is that we learn as other people learn so like I said we might be learning one thing like my intention might be on oh I want to know how to um be more relaxed and find more play in my life and that might be my intention for coming onto the course and then another person might say well I just don't like my body I have all this body image stuff going on and that's their intention and that's what they're exploring and then another person can be like well I don't know how to enjoy being in a body with my partner because we have completely different ways of relating to each other and being affectionate and as each person then shares even though I might you know, be a fourth person with a completely different intention. I get to learn on the level of those other three. So there is an accumulative effect when we learn as a group of people. And also what feels profound is to learn about the differences. We are not all the same. And one person's experience of being in their body may not relate to us at all. But now we know that that sort of variation of experience exists and it gives us more tolerance, more patience, more compassion. We get outside of our own experience and realize there are all these others too. And that makes us more thoughtful and considerate human beings. And don't we want that? Don't we want that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, absorbing all of the good energy um, and thinking about how, what would be a good way to end this off? Um, mm. Yeah, I just think I didn't think about this, um, but um, perhaps like leaving us with a little thing we can all do today. 
I um, thought about that. That would be so yeah. Maybe sharing something for people who have joined us live and people who are watching this to take away um, yeah. to the rest of their day for the rest of the summer. <laughs> so actually, this is honestly a great, great tip. Um, and it continues along the lines that I was speaking of earlier. And that is, I invite you today to stay in touch, to stay cognizant of how you're feeling inside of your clothes. Do you need to wear something looser? Would you feel more comfortable if you had something tight on? You know, sometimes we want to be held and compressed. There are no rules for what works, but I invite you to feel that, to maneuver through that today. If you're wearing something that feels good, well, then how good can it feel? How much of your attention can you place solely on the feeling of your clothing against your skin? And like, have that be like a one minute med meditation. And for me, like, even as I just move gently to the left and the right, I can feel my dress, you know, against my chest, against my tummy, these very sensitive, sweet areas. And it's lovely. It's just like, oh, this is, this is, this is great. So I invite you just to do that today and to notice how your choice of clothing changes um, or how you adapt your clothing, making it looser, making it tighter, etc., to have more pleasure and joy in your body. I love that. Um, and also I will be building my wardrobe around that from now on or picking outfits right around that from now on I don't know about um everyone who's watching this but um I have never ever thought of like how clothes make me feel if you know I mean I think if there is a specific sensation that's really bothering me it like and it stands out then I you know then I access it but if not it's like it's kind of a I don't think about it so I appreciate that practice a lot and I'm going to be doing that more and Tammy I know that we're running over but one other thing I'll share is that our brain maps our body and our sense of our body and when we have pieces of clothing on the map extends to our piece of clothing or if we're holding something like a mobile phone it extends to the mobile phone so we're constantly updating our sense of identity and our sense of self based on what we're what we're wearing what we're holding, you know? So if we're wearing like old clothes that don't fit us anymore and that like smell a bit funny, we project that onto our self image. Literally the brain does it automatically. It's not even a conscious thing. And so maneuvering and choosing clothes that feel good, that we like, that we feel express our identity, we feel like more powerful people. I like cough into a sneeze <laughs> so <Bless you. laughs> thank you it never happened but um <laughs> somewhere out there in the universe now um okay thank you everyone um thank you Aisha for as always for your amazing energy um this was a great um session I'm so glad everyone got to feel your energy I hope it pops out through the screen because it does so for me um and it's really nice to be able to get to know you better through this session um mm -hmm. prior to the course um and I'm excited to carry that energy through um and yeah again really excited for this course to be happening during the summer I think the summer energy is so perfect for so many things but definitely for kind of getting into our bodies and feeling our way um into things and now that I guess for folks who are, like are in like countries with winter <laughs> and other seasons um you're now no longer bundled up so you can really see yourself and feel yourself um <laughs> so so yeah um I hope you all have a wonderful summer solstice um, and get outside, celebrate, enjoy being in your body, um, hug a tree, touch an insect, anything. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yes, a replay will be available. It will be sent to your emails. Um, and yes, um, I'm going to leave the last word to you, Aisha. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs>
Our body is our world. So let's fill our world with joy. Wishing you all the most beautiful day in the most beautiful bodies, having the most beautiful experience, whatever color it is. Mwah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Aisha. Um, 